Greetings, citizens of the motherfucking YouTubes. My good friend, uh, Napalm Tube, has run afoul of an apologist. A, uh, a gentleman by the name of Paleocrat who likes John Denver and wears sweater vests. And he is a presuppositional apologist, a Christian apologist. Now, um, I'm sure many of you in my audience aren't familiar with the term apologist. What does that mean? Does it mean he's sorry? Ah, uh, well, yes, it does. Um, apologetics is a... I'm not sure what you would even really call it. If, if you would call it a branch of uh, theology or, or a pseudo-philosophy, it, it kind of is to philosophy what creationism is to science. Um, it, it, you know, it's something that kind of masquerades as, as logic, but it doesn't adhere to the principles of standard deductive or inductive reasoning. In, in other words, it's, it's illogical. Um, now, Napalm Tube is uh, butting his head up against the wall, arguing with this guy. This is something that I simply don't do anymore. I don't argue with apologists because the minute an apologist opens his mouth the only uh, response that behooves a man of intelligence is shut the fuck up because th no matter how the debate begins it's going to end with the apologist going la 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 um, I, I mean think about the word, think about what this is Apologetics. What, what does that say to you? It, it, you're literally making excuses for a belief system. That's what it means. That's what it is. An apologist will tell you that. If you, if you ask an apologist, what is apologetics? That They'll say it's defense of faith. And that is backwards thinking. I mean, it's literally a reversal of the thought process. Instead of starting with a question, and uh, experimenting and, and finding the answer, you begin with the answer and then work your way back to justify this, this preconceived, ignorant idea that you had to begin with. Now, I'm not going to give you guys a lesson in, in classical apologetics or anything, Thomas Aquinas and all that. I, I'm just going to talk about uh, modern apologetics and, and, and what it basically, what it means, what it is. Um, the uh, the revolution in thought that came with the Enlightenment and the, the past four centuries of uh, scientific inquiry have been really hard on the concept of God. Every time we uh, illuminate new truths about the world we live in, it, 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 it smashes one of God's hiding places. You know, where did the human species come from? Oh, we have no idea, so it must have been created by a god. And, and then, you know, evolution pops on the scene, and, and suddenly the, God just lost one of his jobs. And, uh, y y you know, the, the more we learn, the, the more new truths we discover, the fewer hiding places there are for this, this concept of a, a supreme being who created everything and, and, and God has to has to scurry under the refrigerator like a cockroach when you turn on the kitchen lights the God of the gaps every, every time we fill a gap in, in our uh, our understanding of, of the universe the, the God concept has to jump into another gap and hide somewhere else and apologetics, the essence of it is, is, is entirely intellectually bankrupt. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's really just very intellectually dishonest. Because people who engage in this are smart enough to know better. So that they, they really are liars. I mean, apologists are, are, I don't really want to use the term sophist, because uh, I actually respect 
some of the Greek sophists quite a bit, and I think it would be an insult to their memory to, to compare them to these jackasses. But um, the, the, the apologist is uh, a, a man who's more than willing to deliberately deceive, to, to use intellectual trickery um, for, for the, the heavenly uh, reward that he believes he's going to get by, by saving souls, by deceiving people into the flock. And um, the apologist is a man who uh, wants to shoehorn the concept of God back into the modern uh, intellectual discourse in which that concept has become utterly obsolete. Now, for an example of this, look at the way creationism has changed with the times. Okay, in Darwin's day, we didn't hear anything about intelligent design. You know, back then the creationist position was God breathed life into a handful of mud and, and created uh, and created Adam, and, and that was the the genesis of, of the human species. But but then, y you know, an atheist named Francis Crick comes along and discovers DNA, and, and now all of a sudden, oh well, uh, that DNA that that's the language of God. Th this is the hidden code. Of, of the 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 divine watchmaker who created human life. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, well, you know, why weren't you saying it a few uh, hundred years ago? Well, why now? You know, they have to backpedal and, and keep continually trying to to um, to rework the God concept so that it fits the revelations of uh, the sciences. Pretty ironic, isn't it? Creationism has evolved. Well, presuppositional apologetics, which this paleocrat dumbass specializes in, is the uh, it's the philosophical equivalent of that. And normally, I, I would not waste my time arguing with somebody like this because I, I know where it leads it's it's just it's utterly futile you can't reason a man out of a belief to which reason didn't lead him in the first place but uh, I'm doing this as, as a favor to Napalm to you because <laughs> I know he wants to see this motherfucker get pwned and, and as I said to Napalm on MSN you, you know through my entire early 20s while I was a a young uh, philosophy major, I, I, I spent my college years doing three fucking things. Getting fucked up, chasing girls around the campus, and arguing with Christian apologists. This is how I spent my fucking time. So I can make short work of this motherfucker. And let's get started with that right now. And bake I, I, I <laughs> he, he was right to advise you not to debate with Catholics. We've been doing this now for 2,000 years. If he in fact did advise you not to debate with Catholics. Fake Sagan should have taken his own advice because so far, all he's done, he, for one, experience of the masses equals argumentum ad populorum fallacy. Wow, imagine that, Latin, I'm a Latin mass Catholic, familiar. He says, I fail. The problem is, I was talking about you. Okay, because you said you were a pragmatist. Now he asked me, well, what does pragmatism have to do anything with it? And, and the answer is really simple. It's really simple sometimes. Why try to reinvent the wheel? Okay, pragmatism. Pragmatism. Let's talk about you guys are the the atheists and the free thinkers that all just happen to think alike, kind of like all of those really independent people that don't want to look like each other. That they, they go over to hot topic and they dress the same in their black clothes and long chains. Okay, you guys always talk about Occam's razor, right? Well, goodness alive! Here you've got how many different people throughout history, the masses, have believed in something, but you want to go against the grain. Which one's more practical, to go against the grain, or to go with it? We're not talking about truth here, we're talking just about practicality. We're just talking about pragmatism. So why don't you start going with the flow here, and start, being, and start just going along with the masses? 
That's what it was, fake Sagan. Well, I was a Catholic altar boy and tend to Latin mass, so I know what Latin means. Well, well, clearly you fucking don't, because you just said populorum. And it isn't populorum, it's populum. Argumentum ad populum. Okay, there's no R. Uh, now, I, I guess that just goes to show that, that hearing repetitive chants in, in a, uh, a temple is no substitute for a real education. Now, um, let me fill you guys in on, on what he's referring to right there. Now, this is from the comments of um, Napalm Tube's most recent video, or at least it is at the time of this recording, which is uh, Velociraptors and, and Lesbian Sex, I believe is the title. And, and this is what um, this is what Paleocrat says. I'm not going to read the whole thing, just the pertinent bit. He says, Pragmatism would say that the majority of humans in history have believed in religious experience and that your notion of materialism or naturalism is novel. Elitism. Screw the experiences of the masses. All right, now I replied to that with a comment and I said, experiences of the masses equals argumentum ad populum fallacy. You fail. For those in the audience who don't know what argumentum ad populum means, yes, it actually is Latin. It, it means uh, appeal to the masses. And this is an argument whereby you say, because a lot of people believe X, therefore X is true. So in other words, uh, you know, everyone believes that uh, Iraq has weapons of mass destruction, therefore it's true, because everyone believes it. You know, some of the logical fallacies are, are a little bit uh, tricky and difficult to understand. That one isn't. I think a five-year-old can understand why that's not valid reasoning. Okay, and that's exactly what this jackass is trying to employ right here. He's saying, oh, well, the majority of humans throughout history believed in some kind of religious experience, and then here you are with, with your new, uh, your, your, your fancy new uh, naturalistic, materialistic, uh, scientific worldview, and, and only the, you know, you're in the minority with that. Uh, most people are retards like me, so therefore, <laughs> just go with the flow, you, you know. Uh, get, get, on the, get on the tra 